Mmm, that's drunk. Most of the time with horror games, they're set up to provide a creepy, unsettling atmosphere, maybe some jump scares, with a dash of blood and gore here and there. But then there's horror games like Zombie Nation for the NES, where this brand of horror is to just throw as much crazy, weird, messed up, insane stuff at the screen as possible. This is usually how horror arcade games are set up, especially light gun games like House of the Dead, but an NES horror game that tries to look as crazy as possible? It's not something you see too often, and Zombie Nation does not hold back. As you can see, this is a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up, and it was released in January 1991 for the NES, developed by Kaze, who later became known for video pinball and pachinko games. But back in 91, they were cranking out weird games like this. If you've ever played a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up, then you get the gist of the gameplay here, where you've got the entire screen to move around in, and it's B to shoot projectiles, and A to drop bombs, and that's it. I should note that your movement can be a little floaty, like when you let go of a direction on the D-pad, you still move that way for a split second, and that can be tough to get used to, especially when you're controlling a big ol' sprite like this one, so this game can get pretty hard. And I'm sorry, I can't go any further without talking about what the heck is actually happening here. You're a giant disembodied head that looks like the Ripper from Last Action Hero. You're shooting an unlimited number of eyeballs out your eye sockets while you're spitting out chewed-up starbursts that explode on impact. In the stages themselves, you've got to dodge nuclear bloopers through waterfalls of blood. You're blowing up buildings, but you're still rescuing people that you just blew up. Sure, okay. You're dealing with floating fish heads, serpents, and, uh, this one guy shaking his fist at you. You fight the Statue of Liberty after it's been turned into Medusa. And then you fight superstar Billy Graham! So yeah, this game gives you a lot to think about. You get one health meter and five continues to get through four levels with no saves or passwords. You get a menu to choose which level you want to play, and as you might expect, this game is not easy. It's not stupidly hard like Silver Surfer, but it'll take you a bit of time to beat considering there's only four levels. The main thing you have to avoid are these magnetic rays that sporadically show up, or I guess really any kind of vertical beam that gets in your way. These do three times as much damage as anything else. There are checkpoints here to help you out, and in a nice little bonus, you can actually use the old Konami code to restore your life bar once per continue, which is kind of weird because this is not a Konami game, but still it's nice that it's there. The power-up system is a little different. Remember those little guys floating around on screen as you callously destroy everything around them? Well, according to the manual, those are zombie hostages you have to rescue before they hit the ground. If you rescue 5 hostages, you'll double your firepower, 10 hostages triples it, and 15 gives you a clear screen attack. And just to throw in some random trivia here, I should mention quickly that the Japanese release of this game has you play as a Tengu mask instead of a decapitated head. So if that's more your thing, then uh, there you go. So yeah, I think I like Zombie Nation, even though it's not that great of a game, but I think the biggest reason this game is a recommendation is because it's an NES game that crams a crazy amount of stuff on screen without sacrificing that much in the way of performance. It still does have some issues with flickering, but there's really not that much slowdown, and yeah, it's not the prettiest game, but this is something that's just satisfying to play. It's got kind of a Rampage vibe, where you just want to blow stuff up just to see it blow up. And I mean, at the end of the day, isn't that what video games are all about? Zombie Nation isn't exactly a classic, it's a shoot 'em up where you fly around as a huge target, so as opposed to a fun challenge, the game can end up frustrating for the wrong reasons, but still, I can respect that it's something different in the NES library, and I can respect how well the game performs, and despite appearances, the game does not play like a janky broken mess, it's actually kind of fun in a weird way, if nothing else than to see what random crap the game will throw at you next. I don't know where this game falls on the Kusoge scale, but it's definitely on there. If you want to play it today, it was re-released on PC and Switch in 2021, so if you're curious, you can check it out there. And I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.